Hello and welcome to the 10th round of the 2016 PCC Cup Series season here at Road Atlanta, the last race of the first leg of the North American Tour. After this, we're headed to Europe for an eight-race stretch over there, the European leg of the championship. Starting on the pole is Gaspar D'Souza in the number 12 car for Paloma Autosport. Nicholas Cordovo's on his outside with a good qualifying run. Alina Lazareva looking to get this season turned around as Ben Atkins and his team lock out the outside of row number 2 and row number 3. Manicor Engineering locking out row number 4. They've looked strong all week and there's Clay Gibson making his debut starting in P9, subbing for the injured Lenny Jacobs. As we go further through the field, uh, there will be a couple faces that you haven't seen before Clay Gibson, and also in row number 9, there's Casey Lester driving for the uh, new Matthews Motorsports team. We have yet to update our graphics, uh, and uh, the series is actually requiring that team to continue running as Zach Tech Motorsports team, even though Zach Tech and the Motorsports team have effectively split following the last race at 8 Bowl. Uh, the number 23 car that was driven by Matt Brinson. Uh, Brinson left with Zach Tech, and I'm not sure if we're going to see that team again this season. Uh, knowing their tenacity, they will be back at some point, but I'm not sure whether they'll be in Cup. Uh, not sure how they'd get back into Cup, considering uh, we have three car rules for all of the teams, and it's pretty hard to get through all of that. Uh, but we may see them show up in uh, lights or trucks at some point later in the season. Gaspar de is the second place in points, brings the field to the green flag. Cordovo's on his outside, staying neck and neck with him down into turn number one. Cordovo's is going to have the advantage, but de Souza is going to get a good run up on the inside, and he's going to take the lead, head up into turn number two. Uh, Gaspar D'Souza trying to decrease the gap between himself and points leader Ike Durbin. It is a pretty massive gap. It's almost a one race lead for Ike Durbin. But Gaspar D'Souza doing all he can right now to mitigate that, uh, that gap. Looks like Woodard and Andy Lambert made contact back in the field just a little bit. That was for about uh, 16th place. Lambert finished in the top 10 in the lights race yesterday, but uh, he's not really on track to repeat that currently. He's mired back in traffic. Ben Atkins running third place. Real turnaround in form uh, in the past few races. He's gone from last in points up to the top 20. And now he's making a run on Nicholas Cordovas for second place at the end of lap number one. He's going to pull on the inside on the front straightaway. Ben Atkins having straight line speed. I guess the uh, Junos aren't really suited uh, for good straight line speed. He's going to pull on the inside of Cordovas, who really is not uh, looked too fast in his first couple laps. He's going to drive off the track, and Ben Atkins uh, P2 right now. Uh, here is Clay Gibson making his PCC Cup Series debut. The Australian V8 Utes driver uh, got a ride on a whim from AJ Murphy for the Truck Series at Nelson Ledges, and he went out and won the thing. So uh, that really took uh, the notice of teams and he made his lights debut yesterday driving for AJ Murphy scored a top 10 and he's running in eighth place right now here today on lap number two so a good start for Clay Gibson who is subbing for the injured Lenny Jacobs hope he recovers soon uh, Kyle McWulla is supposed to be in that car at Rockingham and after that I'm not sure so we might see Clay Gibson a little more in the series and I think we could do with a little more international flair in this series while we're at it Casey Lester driving the number double zero car. This used to be the 23 car uh, by Zach Tech Motorsports team. The team is now known as Matthews Motorsports team after uh, team principal Zach Kovac, uh, owner of Zach Tech, left. Uh, they renumbered that car to double zero, which was the number of their fourth car at Mansfield. And Carter Fitzgerald and Casey Lester both tested here, and Lester got the ride. He's currently in 18th place. And uh, not doing a too bad, not doing too bad of a job. Uh, Daniel Sharp gets run a bit wide by Kurt Plisk and collides with uh, Joe Craig. There, they both go sideways, and Ben Worthington's going to get involved. And uh, looks like uh, Worthington's pushing him a little bit. Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer is going to miss that, and they're going to continue on. Uh, Daniel Sharp is still in the top 20 in points. Uh, but I don't think he's going to finish near the top 20 today. Ryan Matthews pulling his car into the pits for a uh, flat tire. You saw him. He was pretty off the pace and running in last. Uh, he is driving injured right now. He was injured. Uh, not sure. He's not telling anyone how he was injured, but he was injured at uh, 
8 bowl last week and driving uh, pretty banged up. Chris Benson in his last race with Zach Tech Motorsports team is running in 27th place and that's, oh, got tagged a bit there by Frank Azzaretto, but it's a shame that this is uh, Chris Benson's last race. As in his three race stint, he's actually performed in the top 20 in his two starts at Chicago and 8 bowl, so kind of sad to see him go, but unfortunately sponsorship is what keeps you in the seats and he's not really attracting any. Lap 5 of 50, and Gaspar de Souza continues to lead over Ben Atkins, but that gap has decreased substantially. Atkins is the fastest car on track, and he's really gaining a lot of ground on uh, de Souza in the turns. As you can see right there, he pulls right up to him, but de Souza has uh, a decent launch off of the turns, so he pulls away there. Uh, de Souza just trying to do all he can to stay up front and rack up as many bonus points as he can. Again, he's trying to close the gap to Ike Durbin, and... Uh, Really, the only way to do it is by outperforming him. Ooh, he runs a bit wide there in turn number one. Atkins is going to take a take a good advantage of that. He almost pulls, pulls side by side with him, but uh, D'Souza gets that good launch off the turn, head into the S's, and he's going to stay in front. Ike Durbin, championship points leader by a fair bit, is running in ninth place right now, just having a solid, quiet run. Uh, he seems to do this quite often, along with his teammate Tom Delgado, who's right behind him. And uh, they're running 9th and 10th right behind Clay Gibson and just kind of hanging on the periphery of the top 10, uh, just waiting for everything to play out in front of them and hoping to pick up a few positions. John Jefferson has secured sponsorship for the rest of the season, so he will be in this 55 car uh, for the rest of the season. He has confirmed that uh, this morning. However, uh, he's running in 38th place and not really doing that good of a job. Actually, neither are his teammates Preston Bell and Barry Juvenau. It's been an absolute disaster for Stefan's racing. Ryan Matthews uh, is going a lap down on lap number 8 after making his pit stop, and uh, he's reporting that the power steering is now gone on the 0-2, so as if driving injured uh, is uh, bad enough, now he's having to really wheel that thing to keep it, uh, keep it on track. Alina Lazareva is having a strong run. She's running in the top 10 by lap number 10 uh, at the 1 5th point of this race. And uh, she really hasn't had anything go her way, the 2014 Series Champion this year. Uh, just mechanical failures and crashes, not really of her own doing, have taken her out of pretty much all of her good finishes. And uh, she's very far down in points. I believe she is uh, like 40th or 41st in points coming into this race, so she needs a nice complete weekend to just uh, fix her season. Scott Wallen runs a bit wide, and uh, Barbara Burt just kind of gets into the back of him, spins him off track, and he's going to back it into the barriers and go out of the race. It's been a really tough year for Scott Wallen, and uh, aside from a top five at Surfers Paradise, there really hasn't been anything good about it. Uh, Scott Wallen was running in 18th place when this happened, going on board as Barbara Burt, and he just... Spotter must have cleared him, and he didn't have room. So, uh, Scott Wallen's miserable season continues here today. Looks like uh, Joe Craig pit that damaged number 26 car, but Barney Ward is now the fastest car on track. Ben Atkins has dropped off a little bit, and Barney Ward in fourth place mounting a charge on Nicholas Corradovos now. Uh, Ward's season, he's had flashes of brilliance and a few really good runs here and there, but just hasn't had much to show for it at the end of the day, and he's pretty far down in points. So he, along with Alina Lazareva, is looking for a very good finish here today. Uh, hunting down Nicholas Corradovos is going to do that. Uh, Brian Matthews gets into Tom Wilson, and both go spinning off, so... Oh boy. Ryan Matthews' day is just not going according to plan. But Tom Wilson was running in the top ten. Oh no! And how did that happen? <laughs> um, we've just had a flip under the bridge and uh, Ryan Matthews continues on going on board with Tom Wilson and looked like uh, Matthews just hopped the curb. Wilson was running in 10th place when that happened so he his uh, good run is going to be hampered a bit. And as you see here it looks like Matthews trying to get it going and he clips the clips the edge of the bridge and that flips him over. That is bizarre. I've never seen anything like that before, but Tom Wilson continues on without much damage. Uh, Barney Ward has caught the top two and is making a run on Ben Atkins. Atkins, seeing that he's faster, being the good team owner he is, he concedes and he lets Barney Ward go, so maybe a little bit of team orders at, over at uh, TBA. 
So now it's Barney Ward's turn to go after Gaspar de Souza, and uh, he's already pulled quite a bit of a gap on Ben Atkins, so uh, maybe Ward can actually do something with this and take the lead. That would be cool to see. Uh, Barney Ward up front, and uh, we haven't really seen him do that much. Uh, Ryan Matthews, despite uh, flipping, is continuing on, so the perseverance of Ryan, the Bull Matthews, is uh, definitely apparent here today. It looks like Alex Phillips is having a problem from 24th place. That car is slow. Uh, he's reporting a loss of power. That car has uh, reportedly dropped at least one cylinder, so he's going to limp his way back to the pits and uh, see if they can't get that looked at. Uh, Tom Delgado reporting that uh, to his team that Ike Durbin's been holding him up. Uh, team orders Tom to uh, go by and Ike Durbin to concede the position, and they're going to do so. So uh, team orders over at Manticore now, it looks like. Uh, hope uh, they, fall, they fell quite a bit back from the leaders, and uh, hopefully the switch in the running order will help them catch back up, as uh, Delgado has been consistently setting faster lap times than Durbin. Uh, Brian Gallagher now, running in 11th place, is reporting a loss of power. And uh, e either he's reporting a... He he's not sure if it's a loss of power, or if the Junos are just that bad in the straight line. As you can see here, uh, he's holding up Cockiner and uh, Elias quite substantially, and either the cars in the back are even gaining on them. Looks like uh, Cockiner is going to try to make a move on the inside. He's... Uh, Cockiner has been pretty fast in the straight line, but we haven't really had much down in the Junos. And they spin! Uh, it looked like uh, they hopped the curb and just went around, and that's going to put a damper on both Gallagher and uh, Cockiner's day. As now Barney Ward has caught Gaspar de Souza. This is going to be interesting. Here we've got a battle for the lead, lap number 17, and oh! That was the closest he got, and he just... Uh, he had to check up and go wide or else he was going to run into Gaspar de Souza and I don't think Barney Ward's the kind to uh, drive too aggressively so he's going to try to get it the right way and uh, go after him again. Now on lap 18 we're already starting to get some lap traffic. Ben Worthington and Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer are getting ready to go lap down. Uh, Worthington was involved in that incident with uh, Daniel Sharp and Joe Craig and spun out there. He's got a bit of right front damage and that's been hampering him all day. Uh, Worthington and uh, Lucas Motorsports have not really had a great season. They are pretty far down in the points, and they're just uh, going race by race to hopefully get some good runs. I wouldn't be surprised to see if we get a ringer in uh, in one of those cars here soon enough uh, to try to get them further up in points. As Barney Ward uh, gets around Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer the next lap. Uh, Wheat Farmer actually being a very gracious backmarker, and he gets a very good run up the hill, and he's side by side with Gaspar D'Souza, Barney Ward looking on the inside, D'Souza runs it a bit wide, Barney Ward is going to clear him, headed down into the S's, and Barney Ward, in the number 15 for Ben Atkins, is going to take over the lead. So uh, Barney Ward, looking to be our first time winner here this season, first uh, rookie winner, and oh, looked like uh, Alex Phillips hopped the curb and Andy Lambert went around. He was actually doing battle with Tom Wilson for that position, so maybe a bit of team orders there. Uh, officials didn't want to look at it though, and uh, Ryan Matthews and Daniel Sharp's poor days continue as both now go uh, into the sand trap. That's not the first time either of them have been in there, although I think that's Daniel Sharp's first time in that sand trap specifically. Uh, Daniel Sharp just soldiering on along with Ryan Matthews, they're unsung heroes of the season, uh, trying for underfunded cars. Ben Atkins gets a bit squirrely around Ryan Matthews, and uh, Louis Ballard, who's running in uh, fourth place right now, is going to trap him back there. So Ben Atkins going down this straightaway is going to lose fourth and, or third and fourth to Ballard and Cordovo. So Ben Atkins now in fifth place. Uh, really has had a tough patch of laps. He hasn't really gained much ground on the leaders, so he's falling back quite a bit. Oh, Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer loses it a bit, gets into Clay Gibson who is still running in 8th place, and uh, I guess that knocked the toe out of Clay Gibson's car because he just uh, hit that tire barrier pretty hard, and that's going to do a lot of front-end damage to that 52 car. He would bring the car into the pits, and they would remove the hood, and he'd continue on, but I think a top 10 is out of the question now for that 52 car. 
Frank Azzaretto doing battle with Lewis Jones and Brian Gallagher, who's fallen all the way back. There's definitely something wrong with that 49 car. They're three wide, and oh, that's not going to work out, and that's going to take the 36 car out of the race. Uh, looked like 49 car went spinning, and oh, Lambert ran into him, and uh, we've still got cars coming in, and that's going to take the quarter panel off of the 71 car as multiple cars go out of the race here on... Uh, Lap number 21 going on board with Lambert. He makes an avoidance there, and it looked like he wasn't sure where the 49 was going and just drove into the back of him. That's going to destroy the radiator on the 34 and take him out of the race. And Phillips thought he was clear, but uh, that's going to do a lot of damage to the right front suspension, and that's going to take the 71 out of the race as well. James Hewitt trying to get around uh, two lapped cars at once, and that's not going to work because Clay Gibson's going to hop the curb and uh, James Hewitt from 7th place is going to spin out. Uh, can't really fault that one on uh, either of them. Uh, Gibson was just trying to uh, hold his line and get out of the way, but they were in a 3-wide situation and that wasn't going to work. Barney Ward uh, has pulled a bit of a gap, but now he's run into the Steffens Racing duo of uh, Barry Juvenile and Preston Bell, who are running 32nd and 33rd right now. Those are the best two Steffens Racing cars. 3-wide through the S's but he's going to make it work. Uh, Barney Ward being very aggressive with the lapped cars today, and he's just slicing through them uh, like a farmer with a scythe. And uh, Barney Ward now setting up Kelly Blackwater, who is uh, having a difficult day as well. She's top five in points. As uh, Here's Louis Ballard making a move on second place now. Uh, he's caught Gaspar D'Souza, who's been struggling with the lapped cars. Stefan's racing car is holding him up, and uh, side by side through here trying to pick the right line. Oh, looked like Juveno hopped the curb, uh, and oh! Juveno into the wall, and Gaspar D'Souza goes around. Gonna take a look at that here. Looked like uh, Gaspar D'Souza just tried to make an aggressive move on the outside, and uh, yeah, just tried to make a move, and uh, 65 car moved over just barely. And it looked like Cordova's got clipped there, there, as uh, he went by. We're going to go on board with Cordova's to take a look at that. Uh, he was running in the top five at this point. You can see there he tries to make a move. He clips him. And coming down the hill, he's definitely off the pace a bit. There goes Ben Atkins. And the car just gave up. Uh, I guess that destroyed the radiator on the 39 car. And that's going to take him out of the race. Wow. Wow. Cordovo's good run goes up in smoke. Now, Louis Ballard has emerged as the primary challenger to Barney Ward, and uh, with lap traffic, he's actually been able to catch him. He is very close to Barney Ward. No one's really been able to gain a gap on uh, or as the leader, and you can see Ben Atkins back there as well, so he's starting to rebound, and uh, Barney Ward being stuck behind Dan Foray isn't helping his matters at all. Uh, look at this gap that... Uh, Louis Ballard has reduced to almost nothing. Barney Ward finally makes a move on uh, Dan Ferre. And uh, Ferre just trying to get out of the way. But Louis Ballard is now the primary challenger to Barney Ward. Just past halfway and Barney Ward getting really aggressive with the lap cars. Oh, he just turned Cale Burnfart Jr. into the wall. Why did he do that? He just cost himself the lead as Louis Ballard takes the lead. That was the mistake he was looking for. A rookie mistake by Barney Ward while he was in the lead costs him the top spot as uh, going on board you can see here it looks like he was hoping Bernfart Jr. would just lay over and give him the line but Bernfart Jr. is not that kind of driver so Barney Ward had enough of it put him in the wall got clipped a bit and he hit the wall himself and that's going to cost Barney Ward the top spot as Ballard starts to pull away uh, Akio Gifu caught up uh, in all of this mess has now moved up into the top 10 uh, Gifu has had a, a, an exceptional past two races. He's finished second at both uh, Chicago Twin and 8 Bull, and uh, he's looking to make it three straight top tens uh, driving the 466 car. Now, looks like Ian Elias and Ben Worthington, they've had some history here today already, and oh! Worthington just turned him from eighth place. That was a bit uncalled for, I think. As uh, Ian Elias, that just... That destroyed the front end of his car, but he's going to continue on and uh, bring it back to the pits and get that hood removed. And uh, that was a bit uncalled for from uh, Worthington as Louis Ballard's opened up a two-second gap already on Barney Ward. 
as uh, Louis Billard looking to shake off uh, some bad luck that he's been having this season. And uh, I guess this is how he's going to do it. Ryan Matthews in the middle of a uh, TBA sandwich, and he's going to exit that by spinning off the track into the sand trap once again. Uh, Ryan Matthews is really just having an absolutely miserable day, but he's still out on the track, and that's more than you can say for quite a lot of other cars that have been damaged here today. Ramsey Cockner kicks off green flag pit stops on lap number 30, uh, pitting from 8th place, and uh, he's going to bring in a few of the leaders. There's uh, Josh Marshall and Lewis Jones, who are running just outside the top 10, and uh, Chris Benson brings his car in as well. Ben Atkins is going to pit on the next lap from second, uh, 3rd place, actually. He and Alina Lazareva is going to follow suit. She's made it into the top five, and Tom Delgado and uh, Ike Durbin as well. Ben Atkins comes out of the pits in front of everyone else. Louis Blard pits the next lap, and uh, there's Barney Ward. So looks like they're trying to uh, cover each other with the same strategy. As uh, looks like James Hewitt's getting ready to pit, and Ryan Matthews hops the curb and goes around into the sand trap once again. Uh, this seems to be a common reoccurrence for that 0-2 car. Looking at the battle off of Pit Road, and that dark car in the back is Ben Atkins. Louis Ballard comes out of the pits, and he is just barely going to beat Ben Atkins out of the pit lane. Uh, and we still haven't seen Barney Ward come out. Where is the 15 car? He's... I, I don't see him in any shot. Uh, that crew really... The 15 crew really botched their stop if that's the case, because uh, Barney Ward is nowhere to be seen. Uh, absolutely nowhere to be seen. Excellent pit work by uh, the Manticore Engineering guys put Ike Durbin up to third place, so a fantastic run now for the two car trying to mitigate any kind of uh, points gain his rivals might get, and John Jefferson gets spun off by Akio Gifu, who had gained uh, a few more positions. He was up to eighth place, but John Jefferson having a miserable day, and Gaspar D'Souza gets spun off. That was actually for position. He got spun by Tom Wilson, and now going on board with Tom Delgado right behind Barney Ward. That's where Ward ended up. He is in fourth place. Tom Delgado in fifth, and what kind of pit merge was that? Preston Bell just pulled out in front of Tom Delgado. That's going to destroy the radiator on the three car and take Tom Delgado out of the race from a top five. That is ridiculous. Uh, Barbara Burt running in the top 10 having a good run and there's Daniel Sharp who's going to go play in the sand trap once again and take uh, Barbara Burt with him. Barbara Burt winning at 8 bull for the second year in a row and uh, she's having a good season but uh, she's going to lose a few positions there and Mark Burt later that lap battling with uh, Gaspar D'Souza is going to clip him and go off on his own. So that was a battle for 15th place and uh, he's going to lose that. Now we've got Daniel Sharp trying to uh, take Barbara Burton to the sand trap once again a lap later, and he just goes off by himself. So uh, Daniel Sharp, <laughs> what are you doing? I, I know you and Barbara Burton are doing well, but uh, together, but not so much. Casey Lester trying to get around Gaspar D'Souza. Uh, D'Souza jumps the curb, defends aggressively. Casey Lester has none of it and takes both of them into the bridge, taking both of them out of the race from 16th and 17th place. Casey Lester was looking pretty good on debut, but unfortunately, it wasn't meant to be. Louis Ballard uh, holding a decent lead over Ben Atkins. He's got the lapped car of, I think that is Elias. It's either Elias or Gibson. Uh, that's, okay, that is Elias. Uh, he's got the white roof. But Louis Ballard really trying to shake off the gremlins and get a win here today. Jerry Myatt is in 20th place, so that tells you how this race has been going. And uh, he gets into Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer, goes spinning off, and uh, just barely gets into the sand trap. He's going to keep it going. There goes Alina Lazareva, and pulling back onto the track, Hugo Hakai slows up, and Kurt Pliskin runs into him right in front of James Hewitt, who is running in the top 10. Uh, Pliskin, you know the brakes, the pedal on the left, right? And he gets hit as well. Well, he's trying to back up, so uh, Pliskin really hasn't had a great run here today. Going on board with Dan Ferre, his teammate, who was actually the car that hit him, and it just, the gap that he was going for closed. Pliskin and Hakai were both backing up into his path, and they're going to have to take the hood off of the number 96 car now, who uh, is really holding up Louis Ballard, as look at this. 
there is no gap now between Ben Atkins and Villard. Uh, Atkins trying to... They're side by side. Atkins trying to make as much ground as he can. Uh, Ferre hops the curb and Ben Atkins goes off from second place. So now Louis Villard has basically been handed a huge margin now over second place. Going on board with Ben Atkins and he's trying to make a move, trying to make a move, uh, trying to get Ballard to clear him and just, I guess Atkins just cut him off there. You saw he went for the curb and uh, didn't realize that Ferre was still there. He thought he cleared him and uh, Ferre wheel hopped and got into Atkins. Just nothing for it. So now uh, Louis Ballard has a 10 second lead and he just needs to hang on to win this thing. Uh, getting ready to put Greg Woodard a lap down. Woodard runs the turn a bit wide. What is he doing? What is Greg Woodard doing? Woodard! Woodard's going flipping! Barrel rolling many times and now that Ballard has spun around. He's trying to get that car going again and here comes Ben Atkins who just spun a couple laps ago and he's gonna take the lead! Ben Atkins, who spun, what was Greg Woodard doing? That is ridiculous. He pulled right into into Louis Ballard on the straightaway and went flipping many times. What? I, I'm sorry. That that is ridiculous. And now Ben Atkins, looking to repeat here is uh, got a decent gap now over Louis Ballard who I think is suffering a tire rub. He's still staying out on track after that but I'm not sure for how much longer that's going to be the case and two laps after he got turned by er Woodard did whatever he did. Louis Ballard brings his car into the pits to fix that tire rub with just eight laps to go. This is lap number 43 of 50. Uh, Preston Bell's good run. He actually did make it up to 20th place somehow. Uh, is unfortunately coming to an end. He was looking to be Stefan's racing, Stefan's racing's one bright spot in this race, uh, but uh, the engine decided that it didn't want to continue on, and he's going to park it uh, on the left-hand side of the long straightaway there. So a tough break for Preston Bell and Stefan's racing, hoping to gain uh, a few more points, and that's going to put Ike Durbin now up to second place. But he's about 10 seconds back, so uh, he's just. Staying where he is, gaining, and there's uh, Barney Ward who is slowly catching him. Uh, Ike Durbin is looking to gain massively once again in the points now that Gaspar D'Souza has retired from the race and Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer has been uh, way off the pace. And Barney Ward's going to make a move on... Uh, he was held up there by Cale Bernfart Jr., uh, Ike Durbin was. And Barney Ward making a move on the outside. Oh, and he's going to clear Cale Bernfart Jr. and take this top spot. Uh, Ike Durbin, I think, is just content to stay in the top five. He gains points no matter what, so I think he's taking it a bit easy. Here's two drivers who we haven't really talked about all day. These are Josh Marshall and Duncan Cobb, and that's the battle for 10th place. Uh, they've had very anonymous runs, and Duncan Cobb's going to take the spot there using uh, Ryan Matthews as a pick. And uh, Duncan Cobb. Uh, 2014 was a championship contender, and uh, this season he started out a bit slow, but he's uh, returned to form. He's 10th in points coming into this race. And Josh Marshall is uh, doing his usual bit of staying around in the top 20 in points and just gaining where he can. Ike Durbin gets spun around from uh, second, that was third place actually, by Mark Burt, who's just kind of been trying to stay out of everyone's way, but unfortunately that's not going to be the case here. And Alina Lazareva is going to take the final podium spot. So, uh, Ike Durbin now back to fourth place, but that's still a very good points day for that two car. He's really just trying to nurse it home, and here's Ben Atkins' final lap. He's got a 14 second lead, doesn't really need to do much, but he's going to try and put Lewis Jones a lap down. Uh, 12th place Lewis Jones, uh, making a move on the outside. Lewis Jones hops the curb, Ben Atkins is going around on lap, on the final lap of the race. He's, he needs to get that car going if he's going to take a win here. Ben Atkins, come on, do it. And he's going to get going. I don't see Barney Ward, who's moved up to second place. So Ben Atkins, after spinning on the final lap, is going to take the win regardless at Road Atlanta. After Ben Atkins' spin, Barney Ward managed to get within five seconds of him, but 
couldn't really get much closer to do anything. Alina Lazareva completes the podium, and uh, she actually managed to do a full race for once. A complete race, and uh, that's going to be substantial in uh, turning around her season. It's been absolutely miserable for her. James Hewitt comes one position away from completing a Team Ben Atkins podium, but a fourth place will do for Hewitt and get his championship run back on track. Ike Durbin dropped back to fifth place, but that's still a very good point stay for that two car, and he's going to gain substantial ground on his rivals in the championship. Tom Wilson, son of Trans Am legend Don Wilson, shows his road course prowess by getting that 31 car in sixth place. And what could have been for Louis Ballard? He was he was in the lead, running away with it, but unfortunately, some things <coughs> Greg Woodard had to happen to uh, Ballard that just killed his run, and he finished in seventh place. That's still a very good run for Ballard, though. Ramsey Cockner, uh, after a couple spins, finishes in eighth place. A strong run for that team once again. Uh, road courses seem to be their specialty. Akio Gifu, three top tens in the past three races in ninth place, and Duncan Cobb rounds out the top ten in a quiet run. Uh, Duncan Cobb, a dark horse uh, for a good points uh, haul at the end of the season, it would appear. Josh Marshall, uh, Sapphire Anderson, and Lewis Jones, all the Australian motorsports cars, 11th, 13th, and 14th. Barbara Burt brings it home 12th after spinning a couple times. Mark Burt had a few run-ins with uh, the Sand Trap, but he finished in 15th. In his last run in the 20 car, Chris Benson finishes in 16th place, uh, which is a very respectable showing. Three top 20s in the past three races for that 20 team, who I don't think ever managed a top 20 with uh, Candace Bowman in that car. So uh, Chris Benson, I don't think he has the money to make the trip to Europe, but uh, if you're looking for a driver, uh, maybe when they come back to the States, pick him up. Uh, he'll do well for you. Uh, Clay Gibson on debut finishes in 17th place. Not really what he was hoping for, uh, but a finish is a finish. Ian Elias, his teammate in 18th. Jerry Myatt and Kurt Pliskin round out the top 20. Now looking at the points, Ike Durbin has opened up a full race lead over second place, who's tied between Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer and Gaspar D'Souza. Kelly Blackwater is fourth, just one point back from second in the standings. This is easily her best season ever in that 35 car that seemingly out of nowhere she's just been consistently uh finishing races brian gallagher in fifth place james hewitt getting his championship run back up uh he's in sixth barbara burt in seventh tom delgado had a rough uh day today he's down to eighth lenny jacobs who is uh who missed this race is ninth place and duncan cobb in tenth Anderson Atkins moved up to 12th place. John Jefferson dropped to 13th. Mark Burton 14th. Alex Phillips, after his issues, is in 15th place. Tom Wilson drop, uh, jumps into the top 20. He is in 16th. Uh, the Nicecock racing cars of Jerry Myatt and Daniel Sharp are 17th and 18th points. And Nicholas Corradovos has been struggling this season. Normally, we'd be seeing him in the top 5 at this point in the season, but he has just had a struggle of a season. He is in 19th place, tied with Ian Elias for that uh, position in the points. And now looking at the team points, Manticore Engineering has taken over the top spot from Paloma Autosport. Team Ben Atkins is now in third place, uh, just eight points back from them, Double B Motorsports, and it's a dogfight for fifth through about 10th place in the standings, uh, separated by 29 points. And then it's quite a bit of a gap down to 11th, which is Accelerator Motorsports. And uh, Stefan's racing on 491. That's not looking too good. That team is in a lot of trouble right now, and they're going to need to rebound if they're hoping to uh, get out of relegation even uh, this early in the season, uh, race 10 of 25.